Hey y'all. So I am back um, to do another video that correlates with my last video about starting a hair extension business. Um, since then, I've talked to a few people um, about different little issues um, as far as like starting a hair business go. And so I was supposed to do a video to just answer like everybody in general instead of going back and forth, which I don't mind. Um, but it seemed like everybody had the same questions, so I'm just going to go ahead and answer it in the video. So, let me see. I got my little notebook because y'all know if I don't have it, I'm going to forget something. And so, yeah. So, the biggest thing I've been getting is like, well, if I don't have, um, like, the money to do certain things as far as starting a hair company, then what should I do? Like... You know exactly where should I start as far as testing vendors and things like that so here's what I say to that um you have to ask yourself like how bad do you actually want it um if you and the reason I say that is because if you want something really bad you do what you have to do to go ahead and get it and I know that also goes without saying is that some people have uh, you know you have other responsibilities like priorities in your life it might be your children it might be you know just regular regular everyday like household bills and household bills and stuff like that but um like if you if you want this to work you will find a way to make it work we all have the same 24 hours in a day. We just, you know, choose to spend it differently. Um, some people might have 18 hours of their time taken up and they really don't have anything left. But some kind of way, you're going to find a way to make it work. And that's why I said, you know, it's important to know why you want to start the business. What do you plan on getting out of it? And like, how much are you willing to sacrifice to actually get it? Now, with that being said... Um, I'm assuming that if you kind of want to start a hair business, if you're actually starting it for like passion wise versus just the money part of it, um, then you're somebody that probably purchased hair before. If you purchased hair before, then here's a way that you can go as far as like vendors go. Your favorite hair company that you've probably been purchasing hair from for years probably offer wholesale. I mean, it's a day and age now where everybody and their mom is selling hair. And a lot of hair companies, like popular hair companies, probably, like I said, someone you bought from before, um, they sell in hair wholesale. So, like, see if that's an option for you. If you have some a company that you bought hair from, um, that you've been buying hair from for the last six years and you absolutely love their hair and that's your favorite hair company, see if they have a wholesale option. If they have a wholesale option, I would say maybe find someone who don't um who don't really have a, a minimum order. Uh, so because a lot of orders might be minimum 20 bundles or so and if you just starting out and you really don't have the funds then 20 bundles can be quite expensive for somebody that really don't have it so look into that like see if maybe that's an option for you and that's one way that you can kind of cut the vendor search now uh, when I say that I'm meaning do that so you can start now like don't wait and say well I'm not starting because I don't have you know like I don't I don't have money to just throw away for vendors at the moment um, I want to get everything together first do everything right do everything by the book if you constantly keep making excuses about what you want to do and how you want to do it and you wait for everything to be perfect for the like the perfect time that will never happen the perfect time will never come you will always have something going on and it will always be another excuse on top of the last excuse as to why you're not starting now now the reason that I'm saying if you can find you know your favorite hair company at wholesale and you can get hair from them well, that allows you to start selling hair now because like I said, you don't need really need much to start. I mean, buy you six bundles, buy six bundles and come up off of them, like sell them. You know what I mean? Like sell those three bundles, start telling people, oh, I'm selling hair now, uh, broadcast it everywhere you go and, <clears throat> you know, and try to sell those bundles. And the, the process, like the time that you're selling those bundles um, from that person that you're getting, you know, the wholesale from, you can still be testing other vendors. Like some of the money that you're getting back, um, you go ahead and you reinvest in your business. Don't spend that money, reinvest, buy some more bundles and keep it going. While you're doing that, you can be testing one vendor out. You know what I mean? Like if you, if you, um, get some hair from a vendor and it's, um, uh, 
three bundles say you get a 16 18 20 inch or whatever and they let you you know sample it for a wholesale price or whatever to see if you want to use them as a vendor though that may it might cost you maybe 130 maybe 140 dollars so those three months that you wearing that hair to see if it works out for you and i'm saying three months because i don't know however long you feel like testing is good enough for you I'd say a few months or not even a few, maybe like a couple months or so, so that way you can do different things with the hair. You know, you want to you wanna press it, you want to curl it, you want to color it, bleach it, dye it, whatever. You know, you want to put it through the ringer so you can know how it react for when a customer buys it and they have any issues and you'll be able to explain it to them. Which I said that already, I went over that before. But um, during the time that you're testing that, you're actually making money selling hair that you already have. Now, I know the next thing is going to be, well, why would I still waste money on testing vendors if I already have a vendor and um, I'm getting, you know, this wholesale price from them? The, the problem with using a middleman is that it's not a direct factory. So you're not getting a, a factory price. Um, <clears throat> if you wholesale from your favorite uh, hair supplier and it's, it's not a factory then you know they're the middleman so say for instance um, you're getting a 12 inch bundle from the wholesaler that's your favorite hair company that you decide to use hair from uh, you might pay them 40 bucks you might pay them 40 bucks or 35 40 dollars for that 12 inch bundle well if you had a price from a factory you know actual factory that price would be half it would be cut in half you know chances are that instead of paying 35 40 dollars you might pay 15 so that's the reason why you want to kind of have a, a vendor that's actually in a factory that way you cut the cost and in turn that'll be more profit um, for, you. <clears throat> for me I have I have a few a few vendors some things I like about them some things I don't I have uh, some that are like uh, middlemen that I use for certain things and then I have certain things that I like and then I have people that I actually get hair from from a factory and you know that works. It just depends on what I got going on at the time, how quick I need help and whatever. <clears throat> so that, that's an option for you. You know you can make money while you're testing the hair. Also um, there's okay vendor list like I know I get a lot of questions about the vendor list and I can't really answer them because I never necessarily purchased a vendor list um I'm not saying nothing is wrong with it but you know I mean you can probably just download whatsapp like download whatsapp you're gonna have a million and one vendors that send messages to your phone all day long uh write a few of them down um you know, write, write a few of them down and, and see how do you, uh, you know, and talk to them, ask them a few questions and, you know, get their prices and then try out some hair. I mean, it's, it's really not that complicated. But if you do, if you prefer to like use vendor lists, I'm not really sure what's the best or whatever. I mean, I hear people talking about them. I don't really know which vendor list is what, but I'd say maybe, um... I mean, maybe you can buy it if you want, but I feel like if you buy a vendor list, I mean, you might as well just go ahead and spend the money, depending on how much you're spending on a vendor list, just go ahead and spend the money on testing hair. I definitely wouldn't recommend spending a few hundred dollars on a vendor list because, or even a few hundred dollars on one vendor. I just feel like it's, it's unnecessary. Now that's me. I know a lot of people are selling vendors. I don't sell vendors like I don't you know I don't have that type of time and I don't you know I, I like certain vendors for certain things and so I don't know I don't really feel right selling somebody a vendor and saying well you know all I really like is this you know like so I just rather not go through that because there's enough vendor lists out here so you can just buy one of them and try it out now for um the Facebook group um that I have uh on there for the few people that are looking for like vendors and everything um we're gonna have like a little vendor buys that we can do together and then that way it'll kind of make it cheaper for everybody who's in the process of testing out vendors you know if that's the option for you so i gave you an option as far as what you can do um when you really don't have that much startup money and you want to like you know you're looking for a vendor so you can use that option also um for other things like I don't feel like right now 
you should dwell that much on packaging like that's another thing another question I get is like what about packaging um should it be fancy should it not be fancy like you know like what type of packaging I should get um before like I said in the last video no one really cares that much about your packaging like nobody's thinking that deep into it and so if you do come up on a certain amount of money or whatever like should you go and spend um six hundred dollars on custom packaging no no i don't think it's a smart business decision because um the six hundred dollars that you're spending on the customizing boxes and all that other stuff that could be six hundred dollars worth of bundles that you can turn into two thousand dollars you know what i'm saying so it's just it's just a waste um you can make you some bundle wraps like you can make some little bundle wraps um in canva um you can make them yourself you can use vistaprint like y'all vistaprint is so cheap okay if when i very first started let me tell you i don't even have a card right here to show you guys but when i first started before i actually like purchased bundle tags and i didn't even get them because i once again like my girlfriend bought them for me but when i uh first had my bundles i would put like a little sticker it wasn't even a sticker i actually let me show you how it was like i, I had a sheet of paper and i printed out like my name and like i didn't even did i use i didn't even have a logo i just printed out my name on in the font i printed out my name and i would cut the sheets of paper and i would put tape around it and wrap it around the bundle i mean i know it sounds really good but it's like ain't nobody really checking like that for that y'all like that's the last thing people worry about and let me show you this right here okay so <clears throat> and for a tag these are my current tags now like these are my bundle wraps now um i don't know if you can see but this is my bundle wrap now with my um logo on it and then i have my uh my card with you know my face of course and then you know in the back like the little origin um texture length and you know my little social media information and stuff but before i didn't have this like i said i would tape my little bundle wrap around there and for this part for an actual tag i will hook my business card to it <clears throat> because from vistaprint <clears throat> excuse me from vistaprint i got like when we first purchased cards that's another thing vistaprint always have i know i'm all over the place y'all but i'm just trying to remember everything vistaprint have a lot of coupon codes like you can search coupon codes online like in google for vistaprint and you will see a lot of great deals because my first batch of cards i believe i paid 9.99 for 500 cards because i had some type of little coupon code or whatever um but i literally took my business card and i hooked it to the pack like i i hooked it to the bundle and and that's what it was and that's another thing too you can make you um some cards like some tags and make it out of the business card like get a business card you know um and you know put your information on it like as a tag and yeah punch a hole in and use it as a tag because it's a cheaper alternative now these I ended up getting these from Crystal Forbes. Crystal Forbes. I believe that's her website. I'm going to link it below so you can see. But I ended up eventually purchasing these. Um, well, my girlfriend did it for me. But I got them from Crystal Forbes. And I think she spent, um, it was $130 maybe. $130. And I, I don't remember how many tags and stuff I got. But I'll go ahead and put that down to let you guys know. So I said all I like to say is that packaging is not going to be your biggest deal. Um, Because you can make a way out of no way. I mean, even even the vendor you get it from. I mean, um, maybe they might have a color. Whatever color your brand is, you can buy you some little tags that's like that color. And just put it around there. Like you don't really have to have a logo on your bundles. Um... I have some bundles that, these are some bundles that I had tested, um, a while back and I don't, I don't, I don't sell them, but these are some bundles I tested a while back and it came with a purple tag on it. Um, now this particular hair, I didn't like it. Okay. I didn't like it. So I don't sell this texture, um, from them. I don't use it, but they had another texture that i actually love from them but it came with a purple tag and it works for my business because my colors are purple is it the same shade of purple no but who's really checking for that nobody 
because only I know that it's not the same shade. So when I use the other hair, uh, the other hair that I like from this company, I actually keep the purple tag on there. Like I, I never changed it because, you know, it worked for me. And so I just left it there. You know what I mean? So maybe you can also ask the vendors what kind of little wraps they have and stuff. And, you know, maybe that'll work for you too. Branding. Um, well, that, that covers the branding part of it. Because, you know, like I said, it's not like that. That's not really the biggest deal that you want to worry about. The biggest thing I say is, girl, get you some hair. Um, get you some hair and start selling it. Like, start pushing it. Start telling people, look, I got bundles for sale. Um wherever you at when you see people in the grocery store you you let them know i mean even even when it comes down to actual business cards like i said you can get 500 to a thousand cards i think when i when i went back and i changed my logo this time we purchased a thousand business cards and those business cards were maybe 20 bucks maybe 20 bucks or whatever and I changed some things on it. I even got color on the back and everything. When at first I had like a grayscale on the back. So, you know, I got a little more fancier. So, <laughs> but anyways, um, I got a thousand cards. That maybe cost 20 bucks, y'all. It's easy to get 20 bucks, okay? It is, it is. It's easy because if you see like a new bag or something that you want, uh, some new Fenty makeup or whatever, we might not be able to afford it, but you know what? We'd be like, well, you know what? We going, you know, we going to do what we got to do to get it. And that's just how you got to think about it when it comes to your business. So, get those business cards. They're 20 bucks. Start passing them out wherever you go. When you're in a store, you see somebody wearing hair, be like, oh, hey, look, you know, I like your hair or whatever. Look, I'm just giving you a card. I sell hair um, or whatever. You know, call me, stuff like that. If you need to think of me next time, check out my social media pages. Stuff like that. I mean, you know, you got to hustle because this won't come to you. It won't be that easy, y'all. It just won't be that easy. So don't get discouraged because, you know, you're like, well, I don't have a lot of money to just be wasting on stuff. Like, honestly, I worked at a prison and I had a 12 and a half hour job. I was working from 5 a.m. to 5 p.m. So my morning started at 2 33 o'clock because i got i gotta wake up earlier because i gotta have time to just wake up so i woke up at 3 a.m by the time i got home it was maybe 6 p.m okay i got up at 5 but i maybe made it home around 6 um from 6 p.m up until about 11 like i was online looking at stuff i was like you know commenting on people's stuff on social media like making sure i had posts ready for the next day and stuff like that and i didn't go to bed till maybe 11 11 30 and i still woke up for three and now i'm unemployed you know now i no longer do it because you know i'm 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 fortunate enough to stay home or whatever because i you know i had support from my girlfriend and everything but before you know i mean i had that support but i was still working i was working long hours but i still did business stuff and you have to realize that um it, it won't be easy like it won't it once you get a vendor and a website and packaging and all that like it don't stop there like so if you complaining about that right now um you won't make it because that's the small part that's the small part the true tea and the true test of time is going to be when your business is established you got a beautiful website you got packaging you got bundles on hand but you ain't making no sales like you ain't making no sales at all then you sitting right here counting like how much money I spent on this, how much money I spent on that. And you're like, well, damn, I ain't make none of my money back yet. And let me tell you something. Everybody going to, I'm not going to say it's bad. If you have friends and, and family and everything that, you know, want to support you and everything, good, fine. But um, what I find a whole lot that I talk to people in my personal experience that's not going to be your customers, okay? Your family and friends will not be your customers. Yeah, they all wear weave. 96% of my friends wear weave. Um, I'm not really going to say my family members. At least not my close family members. They really don't wear it. But 96% um, of my family members wear weave. I mean, not family members. My friends wear weave. And 0% bought from me, okay? Zero. I'm not going to say zero because I... I well, look, I don't even know if I could count it as a percentage. Can I say 1% maybe? Because I have like <clears throat> maybe three or four people that purchase hair from me. And two of them were my nieces. Two of them were my nieces. So, I said all that to say is that um, 
Yeah, I don't market to my family. Like I don't, I don't tell them anything. Cause as far as I'm concerned, they can see on my Facebook, they see on my Instagram. They know I have a hair company. They know I sell hair. Do I give off family discounts? Hell no. Do I give off friend discounts? Hell no. Because they don't go to no stores asking for a discount. You know, they go buy they Milky Way, they Outre or whatever, or whatever type of bundles the hair store selling. They go and give them. You know. A hundred dollars or whatever. Like they don't ask for discounts over there because those people in them hair stores not handing out no discounts. Whatever they sell is, they'll give you that. If it's twenty percent off, that's what they're giving you. They not negotiating nothing else. You know what I mean? They not doing it. Anything they trying to upsell. Say, oh, well, don't get this one because you know you get this one, you won't be able to do this. You get this. This lasts a little longer for an extra sixty bucks, and they go ahead and buy it. So those type of people, I don't have time for, and I and I learned that you know before I try to accommodate people, even though my prices were already like low as hell, and then you know I got people saying, well, um. Let me, you know, get a discount. Like, you know, and I'm sitting right there trying to figure out, like, well, I can give it to you for this amount, this amount. And, y'all, it's not worth it. It's not worth it because what's yours is yours. It's going to come. And nobody could take that from you. So, you know, as far as I'm concerned, I market to my target market that has nothing to do with my family and friends. Like, I don't tell them shit because I, you don't have time. Like, you, you can't constantly discount and give stuff to your family members, y'all, because what's gonna happen is they won't take you serious. Like you gotta, you gotta demand respect for your business, or nobody's gonna take you serious. Like don't, don't hand out discounts. Don't, don't even start them with it. If you don't start something with somebody, you won't have to worry about finishing it. So don't do it. I said all this to say, you guys, like work with what you have. You know what I'm saying? Like work with what you have. Um, don't be discouraged because you don't have like a fancy website there. There's affordable options for every avenue that you have to go through in the hair business outside of testing hair. Because like I said, testing hair will cost you money um, because you have to go through multiple vendors. Um, you might get lucky. You might get lucky. You might hit the jackpot and find a vendor that have really good hair. Um, the only problem is is your process won't stop then because you have to have another option You know don't just have one option because what's gonna happen is if something happens with that vendor They're not available something you need something else to fall back on okay, and also um, Some things you might like from one vendor some things you might not you know not just because you like their straight hair You might not care for the body weight you have. I mean, it, you know, it's kind of messed up like that just ask yourself, like, how bad do you want it? Do you need to go get a part-time job to work a few hours? Um, if you do hair, that's a plus because you can do people hair, put that money to the side. You, you do what you have to do. You know what I'm saying? You do what you have to do to get where you have to go. And sometimes life is about taking chances. So you just got to take it. Like, go ahead and just jump. You know what I mean? That Steve Harvey book that I was telling you guys about, um... I don't remember the name, but I'm, I'm going to get it out of my bag. And I'll link the name to it at the bottom. That book, like, really made me just, like, up and quit my job. Like, literally. I just quit my job because I was like, you know, he says so many times in a book, like, sometimes, you know, eventually just have to jump. And I know that's not an option for everybody to just up and quit your job. But you have the option to still make a leap and do something else. Like, don't let the process scare you. You know what I'm saying? Don't don't let the process of, I don't have that much money to do this. Um, You know, I got my kids, I have this. Because y'all, life won't stop no matter what you do. Even if you continue to work a 9 to 5 every day for somebody else, life will not stop. You will always have something, something going on. Something always is going on. But it's not meant to be easy. And if you want to be successful, you want to have a successful hair business or any type of business, it's going to require some work. You're going to have some tears. You know, a lot of things are going to happen. Like even now, um, like I said, I started my business in 2017, like October. Um, and just, you know, just in the last year, like, we just hitting to where I made like 26 something, 26 point like 2,000 or whatever, which is nothing. You know what I'm saying? Like I kind of made, I made that my last, my last work year, my job, I bring in 50. 
50k okay from my actual job and granted my regular salary probably would have put me at like around 26 27 thousand but i made 50 because i worked overtime like i told y'all i had 12 and a half hour shifts but i worked i worked and i worked and i worked and i put money to the side because i knew what i wanted to do i knew what i wanted to do and even with me being fortunate enough to be able to have like unlimited overtime that i was able to work on my off days and everything i still didn't go crazy with the money i had as far as like diving into the business like i didn't go out and spend a lot of money on custom packaging or nothing like that like what i showed you guys my little tags my stickers that's all i have and i either throw that in a silk bag sometimes i leave it in a plastic and you know i set it in um in like a little flat rate bubble wrap either i'm gonna set it in a bubble wrap or i might have to set it in a box it just depends but at the end of the day it works for me and you know it, it works for my customers because I don't have to charge more in shipping because it costs me more you know what I mean it's a cost-effective thing and it don't stop me from selling hair like it's all fine and dandy and nice to get cute custom packaging you know when you're making money but to just go ahead and get that now would just be a waste I just think it's a waste of money presentation is everything but you got to be smart with your money you got to be smart with it especially when you just starting out um Another thing I say is that when when I say um, you should listen to motivational speeches, y'all, like listen to some motivational stuff, like listen to other people's stories, um, that is going to help you. It's going to help you, but just, I don't want to keep rambling, but I'm saying like don't don't get caught up in the small things. You can make things work. Um, there's affordable ways to do every single thing. Like I said, the most expensive thing in a hair business is going to cost you is just the testing of the hair. But I gave you an option that you can use for that. Testing the hair is going to be the hardest thing. You know, I mean, the most money spent. Not the hardest thing. Because once you get your vendor, selling the hair is going to be hard. Like, selling the hair is going to be hard because once you tell everybody... Won't you tell everybody that you're selling hair? Um, you're going to have a few haters. You're going to have, um, you know, the naysayers. You're going to have the people like, why are you selling hair? Everybody and their mama selling hair. Um, yeah. Oh, I can't wait till you get some bundles, girl. Let me know. I'm going to buy something. Um, you know what I mean? Like, you're going to get that. But... Don't, don't let it discourage you. So I'd say prepare yourself now. Um, the biggest thing right now as well is that it's income tax time for everyone. Um, I never was a person that got a huge return back. So I never planned by my business or my purchases around that. But if you're fortunate enough to actually get an income tax return, I'd say don't make the mistake of trying out a vendor and buying like 80 bundles. Don't do it. Don't don't do it because you know, just don't do it, y'all. I can't stress that enough, and I just can't stress it enough. Like don't don't spend all of your money getting things that you won't really need. You know what I mean? Like be smart about your money and plan it. And that's another thing. Are you actually planning your path to success? Like you gotta ask yourself that. Are you literally planning? Are you writing down like okay, on um january um 29th when i get paid that's my payday i'm gonna go ahead and sample hair from this vendor um i'm gonna get a 16 18 20 inch um and a frontal and you know this is what i'm gonna wear for this month or whatever you know i'm gonna plan to wear that for this month um and you know i mean are you actually planning that out like are you planning what you're gonna do or are you just speaking it out loud saying well i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do that but you don't really make steps to do it like that's another thing like you gotta you have to plan get you a journal write some stuff down and um write some stuff down and and stick to it like you need a plan of action for everything you're doing. Just because you didn't start your business yet, don't mean you don't need a plan of action. You have to be smart about your money. You need to start tracking what you have. Um, if you're going to get your income tax and you say you want to spend it on testing hair, well, put your money to the side. Like, put it to the side. Separate your accounts. Separate personal from business so you can keep track of what you're spending. When I first... Um, started out i did everything out of my personal checking account i didn't know what i was spending on what 
first of all, I was running Facebook ads and shit and like, <laughs> I don't know what I was doing. All I know is that when I looked at Facebook ads, because if you haven't had a Facebook ad, like y'all know that Facebook ads are really not that expensive. It's, it's really not. Like you could run like a $10 ad for five days or whatever, 10 days and you know, so, so on and so forth. Um, you can run Facebook ads and I just knew I was like, well, shit, it ain't number $5, $10, $20. You know, I got that. They ain't nothing. Y'all, I, I ran those ads and, and like over time, $10, $20 adds up like that adds up. And I don't even want to say how much, you know, I ended up spending on that. And that's before I even knew one thing about running an ad. That, that's something that you don't want to do either. Like, you don't want to just dive in and spend your money on a bunch of ads either. Because until you understand um, the actual function of the ad and how it works and stuff, you don't you don't want to do that. Don't spend your money on an ad. The, the best thing you can do for yourself is plan, plan out your success, work with what you have, and start there. Like, don't overthink it. If you overthink it, you're going to become overwhelmed. Like, I still get overwhelmed, y'all, and, you know, I get overwhelmed with stuff, and it's so crazy because a while back when I wasn't getting any sales like that, like, I was getting a little bit of sales, but it wasn't as steady as it is now, like, um, I was like, Ugh. You know, I was like, damn, like, what I got to do? You know, I'm spending money on ads. You know, I got me a, a few bundles on hand. You know, I'm like, stopped. I'm ready. And I'm not getting no sales. But then when the sales finally started coming in, I was like, oh, shit. Because, you know, I was working a 12 and a half hour job once again. So if I woke up in the morning or came home and I had like five orders, well, I had to get that out. You know what I'm saying? I had to, I had to find a way to make that work because you know I complained all that time about not having you know no orders and when I finally got it I'm like damn how am I even gonna ship this because I'm at work from five to five post office closed I don't want people waiting on their hair because I didn't like waiting on my hair you know what I'm saying from companies so you know I, I had to get somebody to drop it off for me I package it myself before I leave to go to work or when I got home you know and I'm blessed with with getting orders and stuff and that worked out for me but you have to pray through your process and just, you know, hope for the best and expect the worst. That's what my daddy always says. I said all this stuff to say and I know I didn't went around in circles with this, but y'all, start where you are. Start where you are with what you have and make it work. Make it work for you. Don't worry about what the next person is doing. Um, Even now, like the, the small things is not going to matter for you because even now, like, I don't keep that much hair on hand. Um, because my sales are mainly like online, you know what I mean? So locally I sell the hair because I do hair. So I sell it at like, you know, I sell the sewing plus bundle deals and stuff like that and give them a discount. But um, on hand, I really only keep, you know, maybe like um, eight bundles at the most. You know, as I sell them, I replace them. But I don't keep all of that on hand because I just I just don't need to like and that's gonna be another thing like don't worry about investing a thousand dollars worth of hair because at one time because you've got to figure out how you're gonna sell like the best advice I can give anybody as far as worrying about hair on hand is get you a few bundles like get you a couple bundle deals and try to sell them see how that work you know take them bundles home you know get them bundles in your house Take some videos, some pictures of them, and start promoting it. And tell people you got some bundles on sale. I got a 16, 18, 20 right here. You know, like who want it? Because what you might find yourself doing is keeping them bundles for, bundles for a whole month. You know what I mean? So don't don't put yourself in a position to where you use money that you might need. I really talked a lot, <laughs> and I'm sorry. But I just want you guys to know that, y'all, you just got to... You, you, you got to start where you at. Like, stop doubting yourself. You know what I'm saying? Don't don't be discouraged by the, the vendor process. Don't be discouraged about your money situation. Um, If we all were balling, I wouldn't be sitting right here talking to you guys on the camera, okay? I'd be too busy living my best life up in Morocco, Cancun, or um, Terini or something like that. So, you know, we all trying to get somewhere. So... Do, do what you have to do. It's affordable options for everything. There isn't that's including your website. Um websites, 
Facebook and Instagram is free. Social media marketing. Social media is the biggest platform ever. And the best thing about it is it, it, it's free of charge. Use it to your advantage. Word of mouth is free. If I can sit right here and talk to a camera to myself, basically, <laughs> you can talk to people in a store. You can talk to people in the mall. Just work with what you have. You know, don't overthink it. Don't overthink it. Work with what you have. And if you guys have any messages, y'all know I respond to my email because I know a lot of you guys email me. Um, a few of you guys email me and I email you back. Um, and if you leave a question in a comment, um, I'll respond to you as well. I normally respond to everybody within the day because I don't ignore people because I don't like to be ignored. So if you have any other questions, you guys, just leave it below for me and I'll get back with you. Hopefully this video will be up soon and it's not too much all over the place to where I don't want to post it. But I'm going to go ahead and post it. So if you guys, good luck with all of your endeavors. And remember that repetition is the mother of skill in the words of Tony Robbins. So if you keep doing something over and over and over again, you're going to become a master at it. It's going to work out for you. So just keep pushing and never give up. You're not alone. We all struggling, but we all going to make it and it'll work out. Thanks for watching again, you guys. Rate, comment, subscribe, and see you next time.